Today we're going to look at this really nice strategy to generate a family of approximations of pi. And we're going to do that by looking at circumscribed polygons and inscribed polygons, well, in the circle. But in order to get off the ground, we need to know the area of a couple of triangles. So say we've got a unit circle, I have it here in blue. And then we've got these two radii that differ by an angle of theta, or I guess I should say the angle between them is theta. And then we complete them into a triangle where they intersect the circle. And then we also complete them into a triangle where this other third edge is tangent to the circle. And then the goal is to find the area of each of these triangles. And then of course, if you're kind of looking ahead, the area of each of these triangles can be used to pretty easily calculate the area of the both inscribed regular polygon and circumscribed regular polygon. So let's start with the area of the inner triangle. So I've transposed it over here. I've called this angle theta, and then notice I've got this radius here of one, which is transposed over as well. So of course we know the area of this thing is one half times the base times the height where this distance up here is the base, it's B. And then this thing right here, which goes from the vertex down here at the bottom and hits the base at a right angle is the height. So we have that is H. But notice that's gonna build a new triangle in this situation, which is maybe we just call it half the original triangle. And I'm putting that in magenta right here. And let's observe that the angle of this triangle is theta over two. Well, and then we have a right angle as well. But we can use that to express, well, not B, but B over two and H in terms of theta using trigonometric functions. So let's first observe that the cosine of theta over two is in fact equal to what? Well, it's going to be adjacent divided by hypotenuse, so it's going to be h. So I'll just write that as h over here. And then the sine of theta over 2, well, what's that going to be equal to? Well, that's opposite over hypotenuse, so that's going to be b over 2. Oh, cool. But let's notice that we can immediately put that together, and what will we see? So, in fact, the area is equal to the cosine of theta over two times the sine of theta over two. But now by a well-known double angle formula, that's simply equal to half the sine of theta. So I'm gonna write that up here. We've got this area and then I'll say the inner one is equal to one half and then the sine of theta. Okay, so now let's do this same kind of game, but in the outer triangle. Okay, so now we've got our outer triangle on the board and we wanna find the area of this. But now let's notice that the sides right here that are equal are not equal to one. In fact, by the way we've done this, since this edge up here is tangent to the circle, we know the height is equal to one. So if I throw this up here, so let's throw this dotted line up here, and that'll intersect at a right angle, this will be equal to h. But now we can complete this into half a triangle as well and use trigonometry to find the other parts. Okay, so we've got something like this. And so just adopting what we had before, this is gonna be b over two, okay? Cool, and then I guess kind of obviously this right here is theta over two. And so now we can use trigonometry to find H in terms of, well, let's see, theta over two and perhaps B as well. And how can we do that? Well, let's notice that we don't have the hypotenuse here, but we don't even need it. We need a trig function that only deals with the opposite and adjacent sides, and that would be the tangent. So let's observe that the tangent of theta over two is in fact equal to what? Well, it's gonna be b over two divided by h. In other words, it's gonna be b over two times h. So something like that. But now let's observe that our h, like we said before, is simply equal to one. I guess I could have written that from the very beginning. And that means that we have b over two is equal to h. 
But now if we go up here and write the area of the outer triangle, notice that's going to be one half base times height. But notice that that's going to be h times b over 2. h is equal to 1. So that's simply going to be equal to the tangent of theta over 2. Okay, cool. Okay, so now we've got both of our formulas for this inner circle and outer circle, and now we're ready to generate our approximations of pi. Okay, so now let's find our area of our inscribed regular n-gon. So I've laid it out right here. So just assume there are n sides. And the trick here is we're going to go to the center, and then we're going to place a radius from the center to each of the vertices of this triangle. So that is going to um, cut this regular n-gon into n pieces. And, well, what's the angle on each of those pieces? Well, the angle around the whole circle is 2 pi, so it's going to be 2 pi over n. So, well, well, what does that mean? Well, that means that the area of our inscribed regular n-gon is going to be n times the area of one of these circles. But check it out. We know the area of one of those circles from that up there. And I'll put here a sub i for inscribed, and I'll make it a function of n for n-gon. Well, that's going to be equal to n over 2 times the sine of 2 pi over n. Okay, nice. And now, well, there's not really much to do for the area of a circumscribed n-gon, because all we have to do here is maybe build each of these triangles out into slightly bigger triangles whose edge at the top is tangent to the circle. So now notice that the area of a circumscribed n-gon is simply going to be n times, well, the area of one of those triangles that we already calculated. So maybe we would say a sub c for circumscribed of n is equal to what? Well, notice that it's simply equal to the tangent of pi over n. Okay, nice. So now let's put all this together to find some approximations of pi. Okay, so here's the formulas that we developed on the last board. I snuck that in there, which I missed before. And so now we can do our approximation of pi in the following way. So notice that pi is pretty clearly equal to the area of the circle. And now that area of the circle is going to be approximately equal to the area of the inscribed and the circumscribed polygons. Now the inscribed polygons are going to be too small, the circumscribed polygons are going to be too big, but how can we remedy that? Well, maybe by taking their mean. And now which mean? Well, it could be any mean that you like. The arithmetic mean, the geometric mean, the harmonic mean, any of those. So we might as well just say that this is approximately equal to a mean, and by a mean, I mean you can choose whichever one you want, of, and maybe not n for each of these, you could choose a different polygon for the inscribed and the circumscribed. So perhaps we would take a sub c of m, so a circumscribed m-gon, and a sub i of n, so a inscribed n-gon. Okay, so let's maybe do an example here. And our example will fix m and n just to see how this works. But then you can maybe work out some more examples or write down a general formula if you would like to. So let's maybe fix m to be equal to 6 and n to be equal to 8. And then let's work through a couple of different means. So let's work through the arithmetic mean first. So notice in this case, we'll get pi is approximately equal to a half and then we'll have a sub c of 6 plus a, a sub i of 8. But of course, that's going to be equal to a half. And then what do we have after that? So that's going to be 6 times the tangent of pi over 6. So that's what we get from our ac formula. And then plus, let's see, that's going to be 4. And then the sine of pi over 4. Okay, nice. But that, those have some well-known values. And so that's going to give us 1 half. 
and then we'll have six times the tangent of pi over six, but the tangent of pi over six is root three over three. So we have six times root three over three. But of course, that simplifies down to two times root three. And then we have four times the sine of pi over four, but that's gonna be four times the square root of two over two. But that's gonna simplify down to two times the square root of two over two. But now notice we're multiplying that by a half, so in the end, we get this is equal to root three plus root two, or maybe written root two plus root three, just so that it's in kind of in order. And that gives us this nice, and I think somewhat famous approximation for pi as this sum, root three plus root two. And now what about the geometric mean? Well, let's recall that the geometric mean here will give us the following formula. This will be pi is approximately equal to the square root of AC6 times AI8. Now, maybe I'll save the calculation if you want to work through it, but what you end up with here is 2 times the fourth root of 6. And then, well, after that, you can find uh, any other mean that you want as well. Now, here's a question that I'll leave you with, and that is, well, we know that there are mean inequalities, like the harmonic, geometric, arithmetic mean inequality, and you can fit some more means in there as well. Now, where does the actual value of pi lie on those inequalities? Maybe for this example, and is there some sort of general result that you can prove about where pi lives in this inequality of means? And that's a good place to start.